So, I'm... devil likes to mess with me when I preach. Alright, so, seriously, <laughs> what is this? Guess I'm not moving that. Okay, so, uh, since I have a mic and I'm failing real hard, I'm going to plug some things real quick. So, I am the youth director. We have youth group at 6.30 to 9 for high schoolers and 6.30 to 8 for middle schoolers on Wednesday. Literally, it's the best week of the week. Best day of the week. Um, the, the kids get to worship in a setting like this, but for them, they get to hear an awesome sermon every Wednesday, and they get to have good small groups with um, really awesome college kids who love the Lord and are really good at it. Um, okay, and then on Sundays, like literally right after this service, there's a thing called CLT, Christian Learning Time where they get to hang out with me and my awesome wife and talk about Jesus. What's better than that? Hey, great, they should come. Okay, so, uh, some more quirks. I have three of them. One, I don't wear shoes. If you notice, I don't wear shoes. There's a reason for it. I don't just, I'm not a hippie. Um, I was reading through Exodus one day in college, and I was reading about Moses, him coming to contact with God through the burning bush. The first thing God tells Moses when he reaches the burning bush is, Moses, take off your sandals. You're on holy ground. And that really resonated with me. I'm like, okay, so if it's good enough for the most important person in the Old Testament, it probably should be good enough for me, right? And I'm like, I don't know what holy ground is, but I do know that I feel the Holy Spirit when I'm in worship, when I'm singing, when I'm hearing a sermon, when I'm talking about Jesus. So, in my head, I'm like, okay, if I'm in church, I'm taking off my shoes because I don't have sandals. Great. Second one, I walk around. I know my, my speech professor would have told me, you need to stand still and just have your hands here and just preach. And I, I can't do that. I do it instinctually. I just walk around. Um, as a kid, I would walk around and talk like, I wouldn't just stand and talk to someone. I'd walk. Like, I'd do a mile worth of walking. Plus, uh, one of my youth is doing the video, so I'm going to mess with him. <laughs> okay, so, um, today we're going to talk about heaven. The, the great destination, right? As, uh, as Christians, that's kind of our go-to for why we are Christians, right? We get to store up treasures in heaven, right? It's not about here, it's about heaven, right? Um, yeah, oh, good. I'll just point and it'll be great. So I'm trying this out. Uh, I think you have to double click on the page before it works. Let me see. Aha! Look at that. It's magic. Okay, so this is this and maybe this, right? This is what we picture as heaven, right? Very very golden, very white, very cloudy. There's angels around. They're playing musical instruments really well. We're all flying on clouds. There's golden streets. There's jewels everywhere. Right? That's, that's what we think of when we think of heaven. Um, surprisingly, that's not very biblical. Uh, we don't see a whole lot of description of what heaven is or what heaven looks like in the Bible. Um, we get this one. Uh, in my father's house... Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Uh, in my father's house, he has many rooms. That, if that was not so, I would have told you and I am going there to prepare a place for you. So, literally, Jesus is telling his disciples, I have a room for you in heaven. God has this house 
and he's got a room for you, and I'm making it. I'm going to make it. When I first read this, I was super excited. You know why? Because I had a room when I was a little kid, and my mom micromanaged that room. I literally had no say in what that room looked like. I assume since it's heaven, I get a little say, right? Here's, here's what my room would look like. It would be wall-to-wall trampolines. Like, not just, not just on the floor, but on the walls, on the ceiling. And I'd get a jet pack so I could, like, off to these trampolines and jump from this one. Have, have you ever seen uh, Slam Ball? Do you know what that is? Here, show them the, show them the video. Um, literally, this has nothing to do with what heaven is, but this is what I want my room to look like. It's, it's an actual sport, which, where was this in high school? But, um, okay, thank you. Um, so that, that's what my, my room would look like. If I had a choice, and I think I do, that's, that's what, I would, what I would pick. Uh, go back to the thing. Um, we, we get a room. That's, that's biblical. Uh, maybe. I have more verses about, about heaven, I swear. Um, No? Maybe? Possibly? Okay, so uh, the next one is talking about God being in constant contact with his angels in heaven. So if it's constant contact with angels in heaven, I assume that we get constant contact with heaven. That doesn't look good. Um, Oh, hey, there you go. Okay, so uh, Matthew 18.10, for I tell you, that in heaven, their angels always see the face of the Father who is in heaven. Okay, so they're in constant contact. They see him. They're in his presence at all times. I'm going to assume that we get the same thing, which is really cool. That is, that is formative for me because I know when I accepted Jesus, it was because of what I felt. It's not the head knowledge that I got. It wasn't that... Christianity seemed cool, it was, I felt the Holy Spirit, and that was life-changing for me, right? So if I get to feel that all the time in heaven, cool, sounds good. Uh, The last one, maybe, no? Okay. All right, so a lot of Revelation uh, deals with heaven. It's a select view of heaven. It's what John is, is given a vision of. And his vision is of the throne room of, of God. It's in heaven, but it's just the throne room. And literally only 24 people, humans, get to see that. They're the 24 elders. Um, and they are, there's some discrepancy on who those people are. I don't have that big of an ego to think that I'm one of them. Um, so I don't think I will be in the, in the throne room. There's whole hosts of angels and there's four weird creatures in that throne room but only 24 humans. So I don't think that's what we get in heaven, right? I don't think that's something that we can bank on for heaven. The other is um, when when the end time comes, eventually heaven will come to earth. And he describes what Jerusalem will look like. We'll all be living in this Jerusalem, right? Hopefully. I don't know. Maybe it's figurative. But It'll be sweet gold city like you saw in that picture. It'll be, it'll be sweet, but it'll be on earth. So I don't know if that's what we get when we get to heaven, when we die immediately. Um, I do know that we get to go to heaven immediately. Because um, Jesus tells his, the, the redeemed thief on the cross, hey, I'm seeing you in paradise today. So I assume that we get them right away, right? Okay, so... All of that aside, let's just think outside the box a little bit, yeah? This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ who had sent me. So, in the Bible, eternal life and heaven are synonymous. They're, they're used interchangeably. 
when Jesus talks about eternal life, he's talking about heaven. When he's talking about heaven, he's talking about eternal life. So he is saying that eternal life is knowing God. So heaven is knowing God. That's, that's a lot different, right? That's not, a, that's not a destination. That's a thing we have to do, right? That's a, a mindset. We have to know Christ to be in heaven, right? So, again, let's think outside the box a little bit. Who's seen The Matrix? Raise the hands. Good. It's an awesome movie. I mean, it has nothing to do with Christianity or Jesus or anything. There's technically an archetype about it, but it has nothing. But the visualization helps me. Okay, so when he takes a blue pill, he goes into this, this room with Morpheus, like this. And he, he's just sitting on this chair with Morpheus, right? There, there's nothing else in this room. It goes on for years and years and years, nothing else in the room, right? What if that is heaven? Literally, you, you die and go to heaven, and it's a white room, two chairs, but instead of Morpheus, it's Jesus. What if that's it? You just get to spend eternity chilling on a chair with Jesus. And it probably is a fancy chair, because why not? Um, what, what if that is heaven? What if all our preconceived notions are wrong? What if none of that fancy stuff happens? Okay. Um, what if what if heaven isn't a destination? It's it's Jesus. What if what if it's just knowing Jesus? What if you're just with Jesus forever in heaven? Would you be disappointed? Would that disappoint you? Would you be like, yeah, but what about this? What about that? For me, when I when I came up with this, I didn't come up with this. I read this. Um, and saw it in a video, but when I had to think about this, I was like, yeah, I'd be disappointed. What about my room? What about my stuff? Also, I'd, I'd have like a smorgasbord of like buffet in my room, because why not? Um, but anyway, I, I would want all that stuff, right? I'd want all that, that stuff, and then, um, if you've known me for a little while, uh, Amanda and I uh, lost our triplets. Um, they were born and they uh, died immediately, immediately after. And one of the, the biggest helps and hopes we had was that we get to see them in heaven, you know? But what if that doesn't happen? I, I'd be a little disappointed that I don't get to see my babies in heaven, right? But what if that's it? What if, what if that's all all it. What if that's all that heaven is? Would you be disappointed? I'll tell you why, after thinking about it, I wasn't disappointed. Because there's this guy named Jesus that came to the earth as the son of God by a virgin birth, lived a perfect life, went into ministry when he was 30, taught people how to live a perfect life, taught them about what God is like, what we should do as Christians to follow him, and then he decided to die for us. Because we were sinful people, we needed saving from our sin, from hell, and he decided he'd take that all away if we accepted him. So he died, then he rose again three days later so that we get eternal life, so he can show us how to get eternal life, and he's waiting for us in heaven. He's waiting for us to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And once we die, we get to have eternal life with him. So he's my salvation. He's the reason I'm going to heaven. He's, he is my whole purpose in life. Why wouldn't it be enough for when I do die, when I get to be in heaven, when I have eternal life, wouldn't that be enough for me? Jesus, 
God, the one that I claim I love, the one that I devote my life to, the reason that I'm alive, I think that's enough for me. Is it enough for you? I, we, we have all these preconceived notions. We have all these things that we want in life, in death. So where, where are you at with this? Are you disappointed? Are you mad that you don't get all this stuff? Um, I've, I've heard before, man, I've stored up a lot of treasures in heaven. What if those things aren't there? What if, what if it's just Jesus? And he's like, hey, good job. Is that going to be enough for you? Because the real reason that we should be trying to go to heaven is because Jesus is there. It's not what we get because we go to heaven. Heaven isn't the destination that we're looking for. It's Jesus. Jesus is the destination. So with that, I want you to really think about what do I love? What, do, what am I going for? Am I going for heaven where it's the safe place that isn't hell, that isn't where I'm going to be damned? I get to go to heaven, which is better than the other place? Or are you really, man, I love Jesus, and I just, man, I'd die right now so I could meet him. Yeah? Any, anyone jiving with what I'm saying? Okay, great. I'm going to pray. We're going we're gonna to sing songs. We're going to worship the God we love. And I pray that you uh, take this in and make it something that changes you. Yeah? All right. Lord God, I thank you for this day, this opportunity to uh, speak, to speak your words. I uh, pray that they are not a uh, clanging gong, but they actually are life and that they're life changing. I, uh, I pray that you do something in, uh, in me, in this church, in our community that is uh, kingdom building, that is love forming. I, uh, I pray this in your awesome name. Amen.